Have you noticed that? And the reason why is because I believe in self-evaluation and self-development. I believe in that. Practice before you start communicating. The video record. Don't keep on practicing. Put yourself in the real life scenario as well. Uh, be yourself. Introduction, use names. So you know when you said John. John. Yeah, you know, at the beginning. John, tell me. Which of these courses appeal to you that could benefit your organisation? When you attach a couple of words on top of when, you, when you're communicating, it confuses the person. Because as soon as you say John, as soon as you say Vipin again, yeah? I've mentioned your name a few times now. And I bet you feel like you know me. Yeah? It's because I've developed an unconscious familiarity with yourselves. And with you go pal as well. But you've on the second day you met me, yeah? So John. Yeah? So you say John, yeah, or Dave, or whoever you're communicating with, John, tell me which of these courses do you believe that could. Most people forget the fundamental factor of conversation and uh, how to establish a, uh, uh, an excellent rapport with people by using your personal name and also by uh, uh, getting their name. Uh, it allows you to uh, not only get rapport but unconscious rapport. It allows your conversational qualities to flow. If you watch most professionals, you will see how they do this because what they do is they use personal names all the time. Because see how we're tweaking this now a bit more, yeah? So you could use that if you wanted to by using personal names. Uh, if it's face to face, we're going to go for a handshake. Good evening, sir. My name is Bum. This is also going to help you find a job role. Good evening, sir. My name is, yeah? I like the way you knock at the door when you come in. Fantastic, yeah? You're going to do that on the interview, but don't do it so timidly. Give it a good knock. Yeah? So when you're walking in, it's the impression you want to give. Once people think you're a walk over, they'll walk right over here, and I've experienced this in life. I've experienced this when I did my factory work back in the day. Yeah? You've experienced it when you've been out in the factory as well. Yeah? Mm -hmm. Once I know you are a little timid, yeah? so you have to toughen up in the world. Not be aggressive to anybody, but just toughen yourself up a little bit. Yeah? And I know you will, yeah? because you're getting the right coaching here. All right, get, okay. smile in conversation, even when you're on the phone or face to face. Give it a smile. What happens when you smile at me? Well, that can, yeah, very powerful. Smiles are infectious, infectious, yeah. And even when you're on the phone and you're having a conversation with someone, and you go, yeah, all right, terrific day. Yeah, people know you're smiling. People know when you're smiling. I always say this: your communication cannot not have an impact on anybody else. I'll say that again. Your communication cannot not have an impact on anybody else. So whatever you're communicating, whether positive or whether negative, it cannot not have an impact. Your smiles are utterly infectious. When communicating with other people, having a conversation, whether it's a business conversation, whether it's a conversation at home, it doesn't really matter. When you smile with the person, you have the ability to penetrate their physiology and make them feel happy uh, and change their mood. So why not? Why not adopt the smile when in communication with other people? Use a smile. They can tell when you sound a bit depressed. Turn out, you know, yeah. just come here. I had one of my kids, that was not my kids, it was one of my people that I was dealing with. And uh, it's the way he spoke to me. So I said, have I upset you? I had to phone him back up two minutes afterwards. I said, have I upset you that you have to converse with me in this manner? That I feel that you haven't got no customer service skills. I said, oh, you come across a little bit disrespectful. And uh, he turned around and said, uh, I apologise, it's just me. I said, no, this is a problem. 
I felt that when I was communicating with him, his tone was very out, very dead tone, the, you know, lack of customer service. I'm your customer here. And he goes, I apologize because, but he was being, in my opinion, this guy was being awkward with me, very awkward. So, as I say, that intrigued another phone, got to phone him back up again. All right, and rapport with the customer. When you have rapport with someone, when you have rapport, we don't rapport is? Rapport? Syn synergistic relationship. Synergistic relationship, commonality of understanding. A commonality, when I talk about rapport, I'm talking about from an, a, you know, I say from an Asian point of view, or something to understand Asian people, and I speak to Asian people. Uh, my friend goes to work every day, He's not really spoke to his manager much. New manager comes in. He's been there six months. Uh, he's, he's not my club managed by this manager. However, he's one of the heads of service. Walks in there, and uh, they don't really talk. My 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 my, my turns up on his motorbike. So he's like, "Get out of my!" Guess how long we had a half an hour conversation. I got out of my as well. Bad. That's report. Yeah. I'm not saying you, you have to say, well, I've got this and you've got that. You search for the commonalities that you may have. People prefer to speak to people that are like themselves. Yeah, that's how. If you know, you think about it, anybody that you've known in the past, your friends or etc., uh, that are your good friends, you find there's a commonality between themselves. Whether it's school, whether it's something else, there's a commonality there. Whether it's drink. Or whether you would like to have a have a meal and go, you know talk about work. Well, have, you, have you ever had that where someone mentions that they're suddenly interested in it because they they've hit a nerve where it's something you're interested in and they're interested in you can have a conversation. That's report. All right. So report with your customer. Speak clearly and distinctively. Listen to your customer carefully. I like people that are very clear. There's no ambiguousness within the conversation. It's very clear and to the point. And I'll say, okay, I can go away and I can think about that very clearly because it's clear questioning. If it's unclear, I don't like it. Yeah, I don't like it.